I had a client one time ask me, so what does a black hole do? As I was explaining the points in her chart, this is when I started getting the information about the black holes separating matter from meaning. It separates the story from the particles. It's kind of like having uh, detoxing your body and just having all of your cells return back to you the the clear state that they were originally in it doesn't destroy the language it doesn't destroy how your brain processes and your cognitive functioning it just deconstructs the story and gives you back a bunch of words for you to make a new story make better beliefs and understanding remember when you were a kid going to school and every few weeks or so the teacher would send you home with a progress report to show your parents how well you were doing or not. I'm not talking about the report cards, which were the final grades for that period. This was just an update between the report cards. It included things like your homework, pop quizzes, daily participation, and so on. This allowed your parents to track which areas you were doing well in and which areas needed more attention or support. The progress reports weren't final grades, but simply a way to communicate your, well, progress. I'm going to build on this analogy here to help you understand a little more about the interesting role that black holes play in our karmic evolution. Hey, I'm Kelly, and I'm excited to share with you some really cool insights that have been coming through so many client sessions this year. If you follow galactic astrology, or you're curious about how galactic astrology influences and supports our daily lives, as well as our evolution, then stick around because I'm going to touch on each of the four main galactic super cosmic points, mouthful, and the metaphysical mechanics that evolve us. One of the many beautiful ways that Julia Balaz empowers us, whether you just watch her on YouTube, you're a student, a fellow QSG practitioner, is by telling us that as we work more with this information, the fixed stars, the star beings, the star seed lineages, and the galactic points, it will continue to unfold in our understanding. As I go deeper into exploring these phenomenal galactic points, they continue to expand my consciousness and my understanding of some of the cosmic mechanics behind our evolution. But why does this matter anyway? Because your fixed star alignments, aka your starseed connections, your starseed lineages, your cosmic inheritance, only give you part of the picture. When I first introduced my clients to the galactic points in their chart, I used this image, which was inspired by an image created by the fabulous Ursula O'Farrell in our community. You probably know her from the Ascension Playground here on YouTube. She made an image that was similar to this for us in the course to use it when we were studying. And I've definitely used it many times in client readings, but I created this one for myself so I can see what I'm telling my clients. I first give an example of the scale and magnitude, starting with the galactic center, moving up to the Shapley. So if you live in the United States, for example, I would say the galactic center is like the city of Houston. The super galactic center would be the state of Texas. Then the great attractor would be the continent of North America. Then Shapley would be Earth plus the moon. Or if you live in Europe or UK or somewhere like that, then think of the galactic center as like the city of Paris. Then the super galactic center would be the country of France. Then the great attractor would be the continent of Eurasia, right? I think I got that right. And then Shapley would be Earth plus the moon. So that just gives some context to the scale as far as like the size and the order of magnitude as these galactic points get larger and larger in the physical universe. And that also correlates to the size of influence that these points have in your chart as well. I use the term metaphysical mechanics because that's what makes sense to my brain. With me, you're either going to get mechanical analogies or football analogies. I don't cook. So whenever I learn my way around the kitchen, maybe you'll get some recipes or some cooking analogies. But until then, this is what you get. So the metaphysical mechanics, how this started for me, how, how it started coming up in client sessions is whenever I would explain the galactic center and then the super galactic center, the great attractor and Chapley, 
to clients is that the the black hole, what it does from a metaphysical standpoint is it separates matter from meaning. In quick order summary, first thing that the black hole does is it separates matter from meaning. Then after that, it stretches consciousness. It stretches our consciousness and grows our understanding. Then it sends a report up the chain of command, and then it goes on rinse and repeat. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, stay with me because it gets a little wonky. Use this as you would a water filter or an air filter, like a purifier of any kind. Sure, we can drink water from a nearby stream or breathe smoggy air in a crowded city and be fine. But how much better do our bodies run on clean air and clean water? How much more optimized is our health and vitality? A lot, right? Our 3D human experience is largely a story-based reality. Think of it like this. Each word and experience and belief that we gather in life is like a drop of paint. Every day paints us in a variety of colors and textures. And over time, these multiple coats of paint get dirty and scratched, then they dry and crack, they peel, and they get covered again. And they blend with other colors, and so on, and so on. As you know, at some point, it becomes necessary to decontaminate our bodies, our energy, our identity. At some point, we need to clear the story and reset the canvas. This is where the black holes come in. When they energetically separate matter from meaning, it's like washing your hair after you've been camping for a month or shaving your legs after you've been camping for a month or brushing your teeth after, just kidding. I don't want to, I don't want to take the analogy too far, but you get the idea. I love camping. <laughs> okay. Now that we've had our molecules cleaned, what happens next? How does this affect our daily life? What are some of the outcomes and benefits after this part of the process? After the black hole returns that clarified matter back to you. And what does this have to do with karma and evolution? When I explain this part to my clients, I tell them to look for things like renewed clarity, finding new perspectives, restored hope and happiness, better sleep and general well-being. They can feel unstuck from like past patterns. They can feel inspired and curious about life. They might feel less dense. They might feel ready for a new chapter in life. Insights come easier and so much more. Their consciousness has more room for new awareness. I think you get the idea. Earth and all of the planets in this solar system are in conversation with our sun. So the sun is giving us solar consciousness while we share our growth and challenges. And as earth is in this feedback loop with the sun, contained in this exchange are things like what we humans need for growth, expansion, vitality, and what the plants and animals need, what the earth herself needs, and things like that. Keeping with our analogy, this would be like the Earth giving our sun a progress report. Just as the Earth is in a feedback loop with the sun, our sun is in a larger feedback loop with the galactic center, which is Sagittarius A star. It's the supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The same goes for the other suns and solar systems in our galaxy. For example, Procyon and its planets, Sirius and its planets, Alpha Centauri and its planets. Planets in the Eridanus system like Achenar, 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 Archner, Achenar. Dang it, I should have used a star I can pronounce. Planets around Vega and Sulafat in the Lyra system are in feedback loops with their suns. So each little pocket of solar systems, okay, all the way throughout the galaxy has the same thing going on to where the planets in that system are in conversation with their sun. And in that conversation, the sun shares its consciousness with the planets 
the planets share feedback with the sun for what's needed for the plants, the animals, and the species inhabiting those areas. And this feedback system goes on and on. A cycle of feedback loops happens around the galaxy, and each of those solar systems sends a progress report to the galactic center. That's the chain. From here, let's move up a level, move up the chain. Now, obviously, the karmic chain of command isn't really a thing, but it works for the explanation, so let's just roll with it. The modern classroom is far more diverse than in previous generations. During our early education, like childhood through teen years, when you go to school, you have a classroom full of students from different backgrounds, families, neighborhoods, different home environments, often different cultures, different interests, talents. And the same goes for teachers and educators. They each have different backgrounds, different levels of experience, and combination of skills. This level of subtle and complex variation in each environment creates a myriad of opportunities and challenges that make up the early human experience. This includes part learning, part conditioning, part experiment, part spontaneity, and so on. Just as Earth remains a brilliant training ground for human evolution, so do the countless other star systems in our night sky. I had a client one time ask me, so what does a black hole do? As I was explaining the points in her chart, this is when I started getting the information about the black holes separating matter from meaning. And each time I explained and added more to that during the, the sessions, it just, like I said earlier, what Julia shared with us, the information keeps evolving within us and our understanding. And so how that relates to the chart from a galactic astrology standpoint is the galactic center is a transmitter of divine consciousness. So using our analogy of the black hole separating matter from meaning, it separates the story from the particles. It's kind of like having uh, detoxing your body and just having all of your cells return back to you, the, the clear state that they were originally in. What happens is the matter that gets purified like the water, okay, goes back to us as clarified vibration, clarified particles, and the meaning gets gobbled up by the black hole. And so the black hole just recycles it. It would be like taking a chapter in a book and just cutting up all the words, just cutting them off and, and putting them into a big bag and shaking it up like alphabet confetti, right? It doesn't destroy the language. It doesn't destroy how your brain processes and your cognitive functioning. It just deconstructs the story and gives you back a bunch of words for you to make a new story, make better beliefs and understanding. As this process evolves and progresses and moves on, all of that gets processed and funneled upward in this chain. It's kind of like a chain of command, if you're familiar with that analogy or context where, you know, the galactic center has this much responsibility, and then the super galactic center has more responsibility, more function, and then the great attractor has more responsibility, more function, and then the Shapley attractor has, you know, higher orders of function. We just, we stop, we stop at that. A quick but important point that I want to make sure to touch on is different types of consciousness that I refer to. We're used to talking about human consciousness, plant consciousness, and animal consciousness, and even earth consciousness, right? The consciousness of the planet herself. So expanding on that, I want to make sure to include the consciousness of the sun, not just the sun as consciousness or giving us consciousness, but as star consciousness, solar consciousness. Again, expanding that outwards, to each of the solar systems in the galaxy and then the galaxy itself. So the Milky Way galaxy has its own consciousness. It is conscious at a galactic level, meaning the neighboring galaxies and what's called the local group are also conscious as a galaxy. Think of the galaxy as a person, you know, each galaxy as its own entity, its own identity, its own group consciousness, individual consciousness. When you take that out beyond the consciousness of galaxies, you get to the consciousness of the universe itself, 
and you get into the multiverse. And so the consciousness of each universe, it gets really, really big. To keep this relevant to what we're talking about, the evolution of the species, the evolution of a planet, the evolution of a galaxy, all of those feed up into that, that next order of magnitude in the galactic hierarchy. So the four points that Julia covers in her body of work, Philip Sedgwick, and the many other people who are part of this galactic conversation. Super exciting. A quick summary of this chain of command, as I'm calling it, the galactic center, which is the transmitter of divine consciousness, the super galactic center, the transmuter of collective karma, great attractor, intergalactic transmutation, the Shapley attractor, that which is beyond time. And we'll just leave it at that. Each of these four levels have their own feedback loop with each other, just as we talked about the sun and the earth having its feedback loop. So the Galactic Center takes all of the progress reports that it's collected from various solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy. And it feeds that collective report, progress report, up the chain to the Super Galactic Center. And then the Super Galactic Center processes that. So at this level in the chain, the Super Galactic Center takes all of that meaning, all of the stories, all of the information from the various galaxies, and it transmutes those stories. Whereas the galactic center in our Milky Way galaxy recycles the words. We talked about taking the chapter and just cutting up all the words and putting it into a big old bag. So you can, you can recreate a different story. You can create a new paradigm. So the super galactic center actually transmutes those stories, transmutes the meaning. It transmutes the collective karma of each galaxy. In each galaxy, you've got the different species, the different solar systems, the different plants and biology and all of that. And so it transmutes all of the things that are being evolved within each of the galaxies, within each of the species, within each of those different areas of our neighborhood. Galaxies are working on the species and the plants and the biology, and the great attractor helps the galaxies evolve. And then the great attractor sends all of that up to the Shapley, and it's time to go home. Done for the day. <laughs> Sounds simple enough, right? Well, stay with me, because guess, because <laughs> I can't talk. Solar system, that's the solar... And then it sends a report. And as Earth scratches its ears. Oh my God. <laughs> the galactic. <laughs> to demonstrate the, the scale and the magnitude as you go up the scale. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. What happens next? Glad you asked. Then. Um. Then the next part is the after it expands. No, it's kind of like it's that's where my brain breaks down. Mm -hmm. Ah, quick breakdown of the feedback loops.
So after that separation, you get back, you get back a bag of words to start over with. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> stop it. Stop. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so close. Yep, 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 yep. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't think I did that right. Let's just roll with it. Cause mechanics, blah, blah, blah. What the earth or <laughs> I don't even know if that's funny now. <laughs> that's redundant. And so on. <laughs> Sun to the black hole. That's redundant. This is the part where my brain shuts off. Um, <laughs>